Maris Ramos, your host for Latina Role Models. And before we introduce our, our lady today, I want to say thank you to Reinaldo for my hair. And we're going to have the information for Reinaldo. So, welcome. Your name? Laura Diaz. Laura Diaz. So, a lot of people know you from the uh, media. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about, about that a little later. Tell me your story. Tell everyone that is watching you who you are. Yeah, I'm uh, Laura Diaz, and I was born in, right here in Orlando, born and raised my whole life. And my father's from Puerto Rico, and my mother's from Spain. Um, so I've definitely had a Spanish influence around me my whole life. But being born here and also um, having a family who's in education, my mother's a Spanish professor, actually. Um, they were very big on learning English first. So that was very important for us. So I was always being um, forced to learn the proper, exactly how to speak English perfectly. And then, you know, we would hear Spanish here and there. Um, so I never really picked up Spanish like I wanted to. Um, but I always had the culture around me, of course, you know, my Puerto Rican side was just always cooking arroz con habichuelas. Whatever it was, you know, um, that's we would have Spanish music at parties, we would have lechon, whatever. And but then my life was so American, you know, so I look so American, and, and that's why I, I do try. And I've always had an identity problem my whole life where I'm this blonde hair, blue eyed, very tall woman, um, and all of the Hispanic people around me in Orlando looked the opposite. They were usually short or brown hair, or brown eyes, and so I never really felt like I belonged anywhere. I didn't belong with the American girls because at home we were eating arroz con gandules, but and they were eating like you know white sandwiches and things that we weren't <laughs> eating, and so I didn't feel like I belonged with them. But then it, with my Hispanic family, nobody—I'm the only one who looks like this in my whole family. So mm. you know, I, I didn't feel like I belonged with them either. So, so it's interesting because one of my coworkers, I'm Nicole, Nicole George. I love Nicole. She said, "Maris, why don't you invite her?" And I said, "Nicole, she is not Hispanic." And she's like, "Look at her name and her last." And I'm like, "No, no, no." And I think that's one of the questions that I asked you before when I introduced you. And I have to ask it again when I when I see you. And I'm like, yeah. "Did I did I ask yeah. her that she's Hispanic?" Yeah. So definitely, you had you have that impression. So I guess people would definitely respect you to speak Spanish. They yeah. would feel that your last name is not coming from the Spanish culture. Yeah. So you identify from what I hear more from the, with the Puerto Rican side instead of Spain. Yeah, I, I spent more time with the Puerto Rican side. My my Spanish side still lives in. Spain. Spain. So I don't see them as often, you know, um, but the Puerto Rican side w is all very close to me. I see them all the time. So I know m a lot more of the Puerto Rican culture and I, I love the Puerto Rican culture, but I, I love the Spanish side too. They're just more cabeza dura. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just very <laughs> stoic and hard headed, you know, but um, no, it, it is, it's interesting to be Hispanic, but not look it and speak it, but not Perfect. So what happened was you go, when you go to visit Puerto Rico? Um, everybody thinks that I'm an American, uh, wh which we all are, you know, but uh, nobody understands. Like, I'll be at a store and people will say things in Spanish, you know, whether it's, you know, like something like, oh, look at her, you know, she's hot or something. And they don't know that <laughs> I know that they're talking about me. You know? So that I can... That to, in that sense, it's to my advantage all the time. That's what I was going to say. You have used it to your um, advantage. Yeah, for sure. But <laughs> when, you know, like in an interview right now, if like Univision or whatever, I, I could never feel comfortable enough to be an, a news anchor on there, you know, because you have to speak it perfectly. And um, so that has bothered me a lot, you know, because I wish I could have. But I'm, I'm glad to speak English perfectly. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it is. It's a huge identity crisis. And, and I'm not the only one in Central Florida like my aunt was living in Puerto Rico, she just relocated here after Hurricane Maria. And she's telling me, you know, that there is a huge problem here where there's so many Americans who are also Hispanic, but they're not at all catered to. Mm -hmm. So it's like you either have a Hispanic person or you have an American person and there's nowhere in between. And that's somewhere that I've lived my whole life. And so I'm starting to find that there's a big need to sort of reach out to those half American, half Hispanic people that identify with both cultures equally. How do you feel that has impacted your life? It's been hard. Like I said, I've had such an identity crisis. So because I never felt like I belonged ever to any group, um, I've had to become my own person and from a young age. 
So I think that has created a, a larger than life personality, a very strong sense of self. Um, and I've been able to be extremely independent from a young age because I never really had anyone to sort of confide in. You know, I just didn't really know people very well. So I think it's actually helped me and it's nice. And I try to teach my kids now, don't try to be in one group. You know, never try to just belong to one thing. Be so you your feel own that, thing. that at some point you have to make your own path and your mm -hmm. own journey. That when you probably look back, no one was there because they were not fitting the category right. of your physical characteristics, right. your culture, your food and music, mm -hmm. which is a great combination. Yeah. Like you said, you use it. Strong women, we use it. We use things that other people will look at as a challenge, as an advantage. Exactly. So tell me more about your education. Um, yeah. So uh, my family is a bunch of educators. So I went to um, University of Florida, and I got a bachelor's in broadcast journalism, and then I became a news anchor. And I was a news anchor for a couple of years in Louisiana, um, about four years here in Orlando. And then I switched over to radio, and I've been on a, a morning radio show for seven years now. So I've done all the media, the mm -hmm. <laughs> different kinds of media that you can do. When you look back, what is it that you like the most that you feel you really feel very identified with? Radio. Um, Why? It's, and media in general, because I'm I'm able to um, represent something. I'm able to, re like you, like we were talking earlier. I'm able to represent a strong woman who also speaks Spanish and it, and it throws people off you know they don't it, it makes them uncomfortable and I love making people feel uncomfortable you know I love when people can't put me put a label on me and be done with it um, so I've always enjoyed being in media for that reason I, I, I can go to an interview when I was in news I would go to an interview in a crime scene and there would be maybe only Hispanic people you know there and I would just get the, the information from them in Spanish and it would just floor everybody, you know, and they didn't know what to do. And I love that. I love making people uncomfortable because it makes everybody think about how they put label people. So right now people are coming from Puerto Rico, fresh from the island with the culture, you know, what would be your advice to them? <laughs> Knowing it's a cultural shock. Yes, my aunt is one of them. Um, so I just being able to fit into the culture yeah. and the differences that we have. She has kids and her husband's here now and everybody had to just up and leave their their life one day to the next. I mean, she had a beautiful home. She was born and raised, never left the island. And here she is, her kids are here and she is so positive. And so my advice would just be what she tells me, which is you have to be resilient. In life, you have to be resilient. There's no other choice. Mm -hmm. Everybody has things that come at them. And if you're not resilient, you, life is gonna break you down. It's the ability definitely to turn the negative into something that is positive. It's like, like you said, I was trying to fit. I couldn't find my fit, mm -hmm. so I did my own. Right. So you're dancing to your own music. Right, exactly. So tell me a bit about what is it that you're doing on a daily basis with the radio station? What are your goals? How people can listen to you? How, they, how did that start? It? Yeah, um, I, well, from TV, I was sick of it. It was too depressing for me. <laughs> so many bad stories. I just emailed Johnny Magic on XL 106.7 here in Orlando. And, uh, you know, we had a rapport and I got the job. So I've been on morning radio on XL 106.7 for seven years. You can listen Monday through Friday, 6 to 10 a.m. But on the side, my sort of passion is a nonprofit organization I started called Face of a Feminist. And we empower women and girls. So we've had a couple of events. I do a bunch of videos kind of like this with strong women in the area to show all of the different faces that represent feminism. How did that start? Because um, nonprofit start with someone has a yes, desire in their heart and yeah. want to help others. Right. So that's exactly how it started. I just, I saw that. I very much identify as a feminist. I'm a strong woman. I think women and men should have equal opportunities and equal rights. I mean, who wouldn't think that? Mm -hmm. And so whenever I said, yes, I'm a feminist, people would be like, oh, and they would get very, you know, the, the, word, the word really upset people. And so I just had that burning passion inside that said, I have to fix this. You know, I can't um, understand why people hate that word so much. So my whole initial reason to start Face of a Feminist was to um, normalize the word and just show people what it really is and all it is is equality of the sexes and and nobody would be against that how do you accomplish that goal you mentioned that you have certain events mm -hmm. i've had two events they're all empower women so the first event was an all-female talent show 
um, and the winner got money, so then she can, you know, nurture her talent. The, the next one is coming up um, is an all-female comedy show, and usually comedy is very male-dominated, so I was happy to have all-female comics, you know, be able to showcase, you know, their love. There are a lot of different industries where women are marginalized or um, men sort of dominate it, so that's my way of, you know, sort of not allowing men to come, and, and we're going to showcase the women for once. So basically, you are breaking certain images that are out there mm -hmm. for women, or women sometimes we are placed in boxes. Mm -hmm. So you are breaking all those boxes because you have to leave that. Right. When you were something, but a crisis identity was right. in you. Mm -hmm. So how women are responding to that, and how men are responding to that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm blessed because my husband, you know, is very understanding. He's very much a feminist too, and, <laughs> and we're raising our kids in, in a gender-neutral home. We have a son and a daughter, um, and so it's interesting. I think my best way to sort of um, help anyone else um, see what I'm seeing with my passion is to just lead by example. So if I'm raising my daughter to let her know that she can get dirty and she can like dinosaurs and trucks and things, and I'm telling my son that he can um, play with dolls if he wants to, you know, just for other people to see that, it really teaches more than just trying to preach to other people, you know? So mm -hmm. I just try and lead by example, and my husband does too, and um, I think stereotypes are very, very bad for the, for the community. And so as long as I can break down stereotypes and, and, like you said, not fit into any boxes, then I'm doing my part, you know. When is your next event and what is it, it going to be about? Um, by the time this airs, it'll have passed. Um, so but, let's talk about the future. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, I, haven't, I haven't decided what the, the next, next event is yet because, you know, a full-time job and kids. And, um, but it'll probably be something showcasing high school students, like, um, you know, maybe like a big step, step team competition is what I'm thinking, which will be really interesting. But yeah, I, um, I raise money with these events and then I donate them back to society, like something great in our community. The first event went to Harbor House of Central Florida, mm -hmm. which helps um, domestic, domestic violence, violence victims. Mm -hmm. And this um, latest event, we gave several thousand dollars to um, Victim Service Center, which helps sexual assault victims. So as long as we're making money, um, being able to donate it back to women-based organizations and while doing it, making the community more aware of the talented women we have, then it's a win-win, you know? Before we close the program for tonight, there's women out there that you are a big role model from TV to radio. And right now, like right now, you are putting your heart, your passion out there with your nonprofit. What would be your advice? Um, my advice to young women would be it's so cliche, you know, it would just be to keep working, you know, um, it's so easy to just, once you get married and you have kids, it's so easy to just focus on your kids, and we all should, but I think that what I see is um, women lose themselves somewhere along the marriage and kids process, so to young girls, I would say, get your education above all else, that's the one thing no one can ever take from you. And when you do eventually get married and have kids, um, just don't lose yourself. Always make sure to remember who you are. When I see you, I will remember you as she's dancing with her own music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it has been a pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you so much. This has been the Maris Ramos for Latina Room Model. Thank you and good night.